sitting on a rock. <laughs> Just chilling on a rock. So, you know how I was, like, telling y'all that, like, my greatest fear in life is to have my vehicle break down because I went through that a lot as a child with my mom's cars. Well, guess whose vehicle just broke down in front of their child's daycare center? Mine. Ugh. I'm telling you, when it rains... It pours, and then when it's just getting good with the pouring, it turns into a whole monsoon and a catastrophic flood. Like, oh. I post the picture in the atmosphere of the damage so y'all can see. Like, so when I came home from work yesterday, car ran fine there were no issues no problems but then I wake up this morning and Thomas is like oh can I borrow your car because he like does his own car maintenance so he was doing something with his car and I don't know I guess he like did something wrong or he ran out of oil something but he actually used my car because he had to go run into work early for some sort of meeting or something and he would fix his car when he came back cool started the car up everything sound was fine again I just started it up like I didn't drive it so he gets in the car and when he comes home he's like oh what is that rumbling noise that your car is making like I thought I had a flat tire and at first I thought he was talking about you know my lock issue like y'all know the sound that it makes but I was like no like the locks like it just does that it just costs an arm and a leg to fix so I just you got to tolerate it he was like, no, it wasn't the lock noise. It was another noise. It sounded made me think I had a flat. So I was like, I don't know what it could be, but, you know, my car's old. It could be anything. So fast forward like an hour. Thomas, I guess, gets a ride to his job. He doesn't take his car. So I get the boys dressed, ready for them to come to aftercare because I have to work today. Well... We get in the car, pull out of the parking lot. Again, everything sounds fine, like normal as usual. As soon as we get to the first corner, stop sign, it starts making this rumbling noise. It really make me, does sound like I have a flat. So I'm like, all right, pull up a little further. And it's still making this rumbling noise. So I'm like, okay, something's got to be wrong. There's something like in my undercarriage, like something underneath the car, like, what could it be so I pull over I go over to that side where I hear the noise I'm looking underneath in the tire wells and like underneath like to see if I could see anything I don't see anything get back in the car we keep driving and ever so often it'll keep making the rumbling noise like when I slow down the rumbling noise will calm down and it'll stop but then the faster like the more speed I pick up the louder the rumbling noise gets so I'm like what is happening like I looked at it nothing is wrong with it what is going on so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to pull over into a parking lot and take another look at it because something isn't right. So we make it to Theo's aftercare place, his daycare. And as I'm about to, now it's like making the rumbling noise is constant. Like it's not stopping or slowing down as I slow down the car, none of that. So I'm pulling into the parking lot. I'm like, let me just park the car, put it in a spot so that I can look at the problem. As soon as I turn in, well, attempt to turn into the parking lot, all I hear is a giant snap and the car like tilts and comes to a complete halt. So I'm like, okay, let me, I put the car in park, I get out and my tire is gone. The t front passenger tire gone I'm like okay did it like explode like where's the rubble because I don't see any like rubber on the sidewalk no exploded tire parts on the street none of that my tire didn't explode 
the lug nuts completely snapped off. <sighs> so the car, um, one car pulled up next to me. He was like, oh, your tire is over there in the grass. <laughs> like, my tire came off, rolled across the street, and it was laying in a field. So he helps me roll that over. I put it in my trunk. So then I'm like, okay, well, I got the jack. I got the spare tire. I'll put those on. Well, not even a spare tire because my tire wasn't flat. Like, nothing was wrong with my actual tire. Just the lug nut snapped and the tire came off. So I go to look at the, um, I don't even know what you call it. Like, I'll show the picture again. Like, whatever that little thing is, I go to look at it. Like, okay, let me, like, I don't even see the lug nuts on the street. So then I see that the bits of lug nut are still stuck into the hole. So I couldn't even change this tire, even if I wanted to. Oh, so now I'm like, all right, I got both kids in the car with me. They're asking, like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Like, I don't even know what we're going to do. Why do you keep asking me questions that I don't have the answer to? So I'm like, okay, I just need to get y'all out of my hair before I snap. Because now I'm thinking, like, this is going to take every last dollar that I have saved to pay to get this fixed. Like, I don't even know what exactly I'm going to have to get fixed. But I just know it's going to cost a fortune. Like, something like that seems like it will cost a fortune. And my car isn't even worth it. A fortune, not even a fraction of a fortune. <sighs> so I'm like, okay, call a tow company. And I've learned now that car insurance, when you just have like the basic car insurance, which is what I have, like the bare minimum of what you need to be legal on the road, when you just have that, it is useless to you. Like it is absolutely useless because it doesn't come with roadside assistance. And it doesn't come with getting a rental. It doesn't come with anything. Like, it's just you being legal on the road. So, I'm like, okay, car insurance is useless to me. I'm going to have to pay for this out of pocket. So, I call up a tow company. They're like, oh, we're not going to be able to get to you until 2 in the afternoon. Y'all, it is 9 o'clock in the morning. You want me to wait here until 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Absolutely not. So then I call another tow company. That tow company gives me the number to another tow company. I call that tow company. They're like, oh, um, we can come and get you, but it's going to be a three-hour wait. Fine. Three hours is better than 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So, and of course, like I had left my wallet in the house because I wasn't going to need it like I was just dropping the boys off at school so I don't have like my bank card credit cards nothing on me so she's like oh it's going to be a $90 fee and I just need to you know have your card number and I don't have a card number to give her because of course I don't have it memorized like normally I would but in this case I was like okay let me not memorize my bank card that way I can't just be so apt to spend 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 like, I would actually have to put in the effort to go find my card and be able to put in my information. So I made it a point to not memorize any of my card numbers. That way I won't spend on them. But it came to bite me in the butt because when I needed it most, <laughs> I didn't know any numbers. So now I was my call Thomas. He was able to leave his job. Um, he put oil in his car or whatever, so it was drivable. Again, he was able to come here. And he, like, jacked my car up and put the, I don't know, is it, like, the hub? The, I don't know, whatever that thing is in the picture, again. was able to, like, prop that thing up on a rock so, like, it's not completely on the ground and my car be all topsy-turvy. And he took Tom Tom to his aftercare center because he was just all running around in the street, just oh, making an already stressful situation even more stressful. So, yeah. Yeah. That is my morning. Happy Monday, everybody. It's my favorite day of the week. Um, <laughs> oh, like I'm laughing, but like I want to cry so bad. So bad. Like, 
And then every five seconds, like, people keep pulling up, and I get that they're trying to be nice and helpful. It's a wonderful thing. God bless them. But, like, to just keep having to say, like, oh, no, there's really nothing we can do. Like, do you have a jack? I have a, the, whatever you call it that you need to change the tire. I can help you. Like, there's nothing anyone can do. Because it's broken, broken. So, I'm just sitting on a rock. Waiting for this tow company to come. three hours like and it (laughs) Thomas gave me like some I got water and some chips like cause I'm gonna be here a minute Uh, yo and I didn't even tell y'all I had went on a walk the other day like when I was taking the boys to um summer school I decided, like, oh, we're going to walk today. We're not going to drive the car. We're going to walk so I can get some exercise in. So I dropped the boys off. And as I'm walking, it was only, like, a mile and a half. As I'm walking, like, I just got the idea in my mind of, like, oh, you know what? You should pray while you're doing this walk. Like, you haven't prayed in a minute besides, like, your morning prayers. Just take this opportunity to pray while you're walking. So I'm praying, you know, about all the things that I'm want God to help me with in life and all the things that I need and I'm trying to get a handle on and all of that and next thing I know this car pulls up alongside of me and I'm like okay are they trying to see if I need a ride like I'm definitely doing it for exercise so I take my headphones out car stops a woman rolls down the window and she's like um I don't know you but I was just driving and God told me to tell you that whatever it is you're praying about He hears you, and he has a situation handled. I was like, say what now? (laughs) And she repeated herself, and I was like, wow. Like, I I didn't know this woman from a can of spray paint. And she really just, out the blue, was like, God hears you. God told me to tell you that he hears you, and he has a situation handled. And I was like, oh wow thank you so much and I was even like because I was just praying right now she was like hold on wait one second because he's still talking and I need to listen to him like really shush me so that she could continue to listen to what God was telling her so then she was like and he also told me to tell you that don't take it away because you have a, a habit of giving your issues over to God and then you take it away and try to handle it yourself you keep giving it to him and then taking it away he was like let him handle it don't try to do it on your own and at this point I'm on the verge of tears because I'm like wow like (laughs) that is so me because I will do that in a heartbeat like go to God on bending knees snotting and crying about an issue and then a couple days later be like nah I got this I got it figured out I know what I'm gonna do so she was like yeah that's all he said I don't hear him anymore but you enjoy your walk and you have a great day and pulled off and I was like wow God really works in mysterious ways. He will use anybody. (laughs) Anybody. Uh, But. I say all that to say. If this is a part of God's plan. For my car. To act this way. Out of nowhere. (laughs) I trust you. I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Any of it at all. But whatever he has planned is none of my business I'm just here for the ride I'm just be a passenger and he's gonna get me where he needs me to go who but baby uh, just count it all joy Drea count it all joy so harsh um not harsh horse well it does sound harsh harsh and horse all that um it is right now 7 17 in the morning 
and it is Wednesday. Um, so the whole fiasco that she saw in the beginning with my car, that happened on Monday. Um, yesterday, I didn't have my car. Thomas took my car to the um, Firestone um, base and they were able to, sorry, and they were able, so Thomas took my car on, basically on Monday after the tow truck finally showed up, it was many, many, many hours later, um, they had my car towed to the Firestone on base where at first I was a little skeptical about them taking it to the Firestone because I'm like, this seems like a big job for them to have to do. And I remember when I went to the Firestone on base about getting my brake light replaced, they told me that they couldn't do it because it was too many bolts that they would have to unscrew because you have to take the the panel, not the panel, but the, like the little, whatever you call it. <laughs> it was like a, basically like a little panel. We'll just call it a panel that they would have to take off in order to get to the light and they didn't feel comfortable doing that but somehow some way they still managed to fix the tire so like they're not good at changing lights which i feel like is one of the simplest problems but they're good at getting half sawed off lug nuts out of your rim so cool it's awesome so after my car being there stayed the night over there um Tuesday morning, like 12-ish, they called and was like, oh, car is done. Um, the only thing is, though, they were able to get the lug nut bits out and they were able to put on my donut, but they couldn't put my real tire back on because the rim itself, where my tire is, a couple of the holes, like because it like grinded on there, it like stripped. At least one hole. It was only one hole got stripped. But... So they didn't feel comfortable putting my real tire back on. So they put my donut on. <sighs> and so, yeah, that is the status of my car right now. And I still have this giant order. Well, it's not giant. It's the biggest one that I've had. Um, order for my soap business. It is for a bridal shower. So they're getting married in Puerto Rico. So they wanted my tropical soap my tropical sunrise soap 30 bars in gift bags with special stickers and i'm telling y'all right now i'm like a new small business owner okay so i haven't gotten it all figured out yet so i'm learning from experience and this experience has taught me that i did not charge nearly enough for this order because like i charge for the gift bags i should have charged more um, cause I only charge 50 cents per gift bag. Cause this is the thing. This is where I mess up. Me and my people pleasing self, like you can't give everybody a deal or a discount. You just can't. You just can't. Like don't cut off your own nose. Don't cut off your nose to spite your own face trying to please somebody else. So one, like, you know, Etsy gives their recommendations on how much you should pay for stuff. And for gift bags, they recommended $4 for the gift bag. And I was like, no, nah, that seems like a bit much. Like, I'm getting basically like little treat bags, the clear ones. So I don't think I need to charge $4 for that. That's a bit excessive. So I had put it at a dollar. But then, you know, me being me, I had already emailed her, like, told her that it was going to be an extra fee for... The gift bags, I had already said 50 cents. I was like, damn, I should have just left it at a dollar. Like, I can't go back and change it now because I missed, like, I already said what it was going to, the price was going to be before I actually, like, settled and figured out what Etsy recommended. Well, they recommended four, but the lowest option they gave was one dollar. So, I mean, I guess I still sort of, kind of make a profit because you get 20 bags and I need 30 so I guess I still kind of make a profit because I'm charging $50 per bag like so 30 times 50 and I only paid two dollars for two packs of the treat bag so yeah but goodness gracious and then she wanted like special stickers like uh you know how you get like the message 
They can write a personalized message. Sorry if you hear my Keurig. I want some coffee. I haven't had some in a while. But she wanted like a special message. Um, thanks for showering Ileana with love. Beautiful. Get it. So I was like, okay, cool. So again, me being people pleaser that I am. I was like, okay, um, it's not going to be like a gift tag, which is what she had originally asked for. Because I just wasn't understanding how I was going to attach the gift tag to the, like, to the gift bag, like, kind of situation. So I was like, it'll be a sticker. So I'm trying to find a place to sit y'all down so I can make my coffee, because I really want it. Um, hold on. I'll find my stand around here somewhere. Because then I had to, like, create a custom order on Etsy. So once I sent her the custom order after she approved the sticker, I had to go, like, you know Etsy now puts you on a timeline. I made sure I put the custom order for the maximum amount of time allowed. Like, you're allowed more time, but I didn't want to, like, go, like, oh, it's going to take me a week or a week and a half, something like that. So I did the three to five business days that I would have it done, and it would be shipped and ready to go to her. So I have until July 2nd, guys, to get this order done. And I have a third of it done. Basically, well... <sighs> It's complicated because I have all the soap made. I have all the labels made because that was my thing. I then had to go to Office Depot to buy the stickers, which they are very expensive, $18.99. Go to Office Depot, buy the stickers to then come home, go on Avery's website to put my design onto their sticker template to then email it back to Office Depot to go back to Office Depot physically to take them the stickers that I had just bought so that they could check their email and put my newly, my design, print them out on my stickers. <sighs> Baby. It's, it's been a whole lot, a whole lot. Of. And then on top of that, because she ordered so much and it was over like the $35 limit, I still got to pay for shipping. <laughs> so I'm so grateful at least that like, USPS has the flat rate shipping boxes because I have to go to the post office today to get their largest box and hopefully I can fit everything into their largest flat rate shipping box because I just feel like if I have to package it in my own packaging that's not a flat rate shipping box the weight of all these soaps is, is, is going to be a bit much. But that was my other mess up. When I had put up the soap on my Etsy store, at the time, the soap that I had, like, I had didn't use enough soap, so it was, like, kind of short. Wait, let me see if I, I have one. All right. Ooh, ooh. I almost dropped it. Okay. So this is the soap. This is the Tropical Sunrise you know, with the golden pineapple peeking out of the clouds, like, that is the soap. But, as you can see, it is kind of thick, like, it's on the thicker side. It's at least cut two inches, according to my cutter. So, it weighs six ounces. Well, the new soaps that I made weigh six ounces. Because, see if I have... All right, so as you can see, this is the one that I made for the order. And I haven't packaged this one yet because I, the cut is just a little off and I don't want to send that. So in comparison, the new soap is a full inch taller than the old soap was. So because of that, I was like, okay, when she first made her order she only saw the picture of the shorter soap so i was like i made it i cut it thicker the shorter soap because of the fact that it was short that's why i made them two inches thick but now that i've made a taller soap i was like should i cut it at the one inch level because i would have been able to bang this out so much faster because my cutter gives me at least 10 bowers I said that's so weird. 10 bars, like, from one loaf. 
But I was like, no, that's not what she saw. She saw a two-inch bar, and I don't want to feel like, want her to feel like I'm shortchanging her, even though the bar is now taller, that she's still getting. Now she's getting a one-inch bar, where as before she thought she was getting a two-inch bar. So I cut them all two inches, which is why it took me forever. I had to go out and buy more soap. Like, just the overhead cost just kept, like, racking up. And I'm like, okay, it's not necessarily that big a deal because all the soap that I bought, I didn't use it all. So it's definitely enough for another order if I get one to make more soap and all that stuff. So it's something that I would have to buy anyway. But just in the moment, in the moment, I was freaking out. I'm still freaking out a little bit. So, yeah, it's where we are with the situation. Um, I got my stickers, got my labels, and then that was the other thing. I was going to have to buy them anyway. Like, I had it printed out labels for this soap. So, like, it's going to be unprofessional to send soap with no label, no ingredients, whatever. So, went back to Office Depot, bought some more label stickers, came home, went on Avery, designed my labels and the ingredient label, back to Office Depot, had them print them out. So, I got it together now, but lesson learned. I definitely need to reevaluate my pricing situation because, I mean, I get orders because I have my soap priced at like a really, I won't say like, it's not, it's cheap, okay? Mostly because now that I think about it, I was mostly like doubting myself, like, oh, I don't want to charge people a whole lot of money for something when I technically feel like I'm still a novice and like, you know, I'm just, this is like a hobby for me kind of thing. So I didn't want to like overcharge people for stuff when I felt like, not that I wasn't deserving of their business, but more so, I don't know, it basically like I wasn't that deserving of their business. So I made my price low. It's $4 a bar. So now that I think about it, like I, all that goes into it, the time that is spent, like I've been working on this for four, for three days now. Yes, three days. For three days now. And just the time, the amount of sleep that I have lost, and just the working, 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 and the supplies that I had to buy, like, because then on top of that, I didn't charge her for the custom labels that she asked me to make. Because when I was on Etsy's website, they have the option of like, do you want to add a personal message? And they don't charge for personal messages because they figure you can either handwrite it on a card and put it in with the customer's order, or you can just print it out on the customer's um, packing slip. But that's not what she wanted. And my dumb butt. All right, so here are the labels for the soap. Beautiful. Here is the ingredients. Oh, glare. <laughs> the ingredients label for the soap. And then she wanted these personalized stickers to go onto the gift bags for the soap. This is not something that I could have put, like to hand write 30 cards to then do, like that's not what Etsy was talking about. <laughs> So I definitely should have charged her for these special gift tag stickers, but I didn't. Uh, so you definitely, you live and you learn. Um, Eliana, I hope you have a wonderful bridal shower and just know that blood, sweat, not literally a couple tears went into the making of your bridal shower favors. Like, I hope you have a wonderful time and a beautiful marriage. But, oh, baby, I definitely got to reevaluate <laughs> a lot of things. Um, So let me finish making my coffee. I've got the stance that I could sit y'all down, and yet I'm still holding you. Oh, Lord. But, uh, yeah, that's the day.
difference in the soaps? Can you see it? Ah. Okay, but here's the difference in the soaps. Like, this is the new one that I made for the bridal shower. This is the one that was in the original listing. Much, much shorter. Okay, guys. So, I have dropped the boys off at aftercare. And I have been uh, completing this big order that I told you guys that I had. 30 bars of soap. I have managed to cut 15 of them. Well, 16. I don't know why it took me that long to add one. Oh, so many noises down here in the basement, which is where I do all of my soap stuff. It is my dungeon of design. That's what I like to call it because that's really what it is. But I've been cutting soap all this long time. And sorry, Monique, about my bonnet, but it keeps my hair from coming off and getting into the soap because nobody want hair in their soap. Nobody. I don't want anybody else's follicles or DNA up in my stuff, so I'm not going to do it to other people. So I have five, four, four. Four more bars to cut because I did cut one before I decided, like, hey, I forgot I was vlogging. So I have four more bars to cut, and then I have to wrap all five, add the labels, and then put all 20 that I just cut into their gift bags and then try to find a way to make them fit into this USPS priority shipping box. That way I'm not spending a fortune in shipping. God only knows how it's all gonna get done. But I believe him that he can make it work. All right? That is my prayer, that God helps me fit all 30 bars into the largest uh, priority box that they have. Honestly, they should have one bigger. Like, I feel like they may have it, but the on-base post office is real janky and a little, get a little ghetto. So, I'm not surprised that they don't have it, but I wish they would get their life in order and get it together and have all of their products out so that oh, I don't run into problems such as this. But okay, let me keep going because I'm almost there. Almost done. Ugh. And then I may, just because the idea came to me, I may try to do like a TikTok. I've never done a TikTok before. I feel like it's going to end horribly and frustrate me a lot. But I'm going to try. Try to do a TikTok. Try. Like, I'm going to try.
did all 30 soaps. I will post a picture of them here. They're all done. Um, I tried to fit them all into the large USPS shipping box. It didn't work. It, it just wasn't going to work. And I didn't want to like smush them and like crush them and all that stuff. Um, I guess I'll try one more time. Like right now I have the soaps just sitting up as you can see in the picture. So I may try to see if I can like stand them up in the box. And then I just don't want to crush the top. I don't know. I'm going to try it one last time. See if I can pack this. And if not, the next time y'all see me, we'll be at a store somewhere trying to get a bigger box. Hi, guys. Hey, hi, hello. Um, so y'all remember how I said the next time y'all saw me, we'd be at a store getting a different box? We went to the store. I spent money dollars on another box. And it wasn't even like a, they didn't, what is up with Walmart? Like, they're getting to be just trash at this point. Why has nothing ever stopped? Why? So, they didn't have any boxes. They either had extremely large boxes or super tiny boxes. So, I ended up getting like a cake box because that was the right size. Everything fit inside of said cake box. I have it packed. It is right here on my work table. What was that? Uh, it was the top to the cake box. But everything is packed. I had to like do some reinforcing to it because you know it's a cake box, not the strongest. And you know, USPS is disrespectful about your stuff. They don't care about what's inside your package. They just toss it, throw it, like they don't care. And I used to work for them, so I can tell you firsthand. I don't give a fuck about your package. So, <laughs> um, I put everything inside of this package. Let me turn it around and show y'all exactly how big this thing is. Okay, so this is the package. It has all 30 soaps in it. Business cards, coupon code, like all of that stuff is in this big old box. I weighed it. And it weighs 19.6 pounds. Now, when I put that into the Etsy calculator, 19 pounds and 6 ounces for how far it has to travel to Massachusetts from Colorado would cost $60 in shipping. So, I have come to the conclusion that it would be easier and cheaper most important cheaper for me to just send two USPS flat rate priority box boxes with the order in it so I can fill up a large one and then the soap that is left over and doesn't fit into the large one I can place into a medium sized box so that'll be $19 plus $13 which I think somewhere in and around is like $33 and some change I can take that hit over a $60 hit to send somebody a package so that's where we are now guys I was trying to avoid sending more than one package but it's just not gonna happen because all together the package is too heavy and that's heaviness equals expensiveness and I feel like I've already spent way too much money on this order like I don't even know what my profit margin is even looking like at this point so okay let me just finish this so that I can be done with this custom order like next time I know so much better that like my time is worth money so much more money than I charged for this custom order you live and you learn it was my first time new business owner I'm trying to give myself some grace on all the mistakes that I've made with this order but I'm so glad it's over so glad it's over What's up, family? So, 
last time I checked in with y'all, I was taking my order to the post office and I was celebrating in the car because it was finally over and done with. Um, but I still had to go to work. So, oh my goodness, the hair look crazy. It's been one of those kinds of days. But they're supposed to be having like a Freedom Fest um, base right now. And listen, I don't really like people like that. And the way they were coming in and out of the store buying stuff and everybody was talking about it, like 45 minute wait for a hot dog. I'm good off that. So we will not be going to the Freedom Fest. Uh, we are going to sit in the backyard, make s'mores because today is my baby's third, no, sixth birthday. It's been a day. Almost forgot how old the boy was turning, but it's Theo's sixth birthday today. So we're actually gonna do either dart wars or go bowling tomorrow. But today we are just gonna chill in the backyard. We got some music playing. We're gonna make some s'mores because I found a really nice uh, fire pit on the trash that somebody was throwing away and it had no issues or problems. And so now we got a fire pit. So we're gonna make some s'mores. And then when we're done making s'mores, I'll probably just end out this vlog because Ooh, baby. But yeah, let me go make some s'mores. <laughs> 